video is not about installing the lights. I think everybody knows that you can mount a light, you can run the wires, it's pretty straightforward. This is more about like mounting something um, in a unique spot that maybe you don't have a bracket for. The, uh, so on the back of my ZR2, I have an American Expedition Vehicles bumper. And it actually has two cutouts for three inch pod lights. So here I have some Nylite pod lights um, that I'm going to install there. And you can actually buy brackets from AEV. Um, I believe they're really meant to work with um, a couple different lights, not the Nylite. And I don't want to spend $54 for those and then have them not work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a bracket and probably 3D print that bracket to install those, those lights. So there's a lot of approaches you could take there. You know, you physically could kind of hold the light in place and take a bunch of measurements off the mounting bracket and tool around with the different shapes and take a couple measurements, make a few prototypes, maybe use some cardboard. Um, a lot of iterations to go through there to get it to fit exactly right. Um, the other option potentially could be is if you have an iPhone and you have uh, the LiDAR option, like an iPhone 12 and up, uh, you could try to scan that location. You could also use a 3D scanner like this rev point, re rev point right here. Um, however, it's in a really awkward place. It'll show a picture of it here above me. The, uh, it's in an awkward spot and it might be difficult to get a phone in there. It might be difficult to get a scanner in there. Not the ideal location without actually taking part of the bumper off to get access to it. So what do you do? Like, what are some design approaches to determining the right dimensions and getting something inside there that you could actually form or make a bracket? So this is a pretty straightforward solution. Um, and I've seen this used in a bunch, bunch of variety of places. I've seen it used in the aerospace. If you've seen it used in automotive and things is clay. Basically, you're gonna take a chunk of clay and you're going to put it over in the area where you want to mount, get it nice and tight in there, <clears throat> at least to the point where you know you can still remove it without deforming it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually kind of hand place the lights in place with where the bracket and where I want it. And I'm going to get that shape by squishing in that clay into where I need the mounting holes to be, the right distances and all those things. Then I'm going to take that clay out and I'm just going to leave it. This is actually a, a polymer clay that has to be baked. So I don't, I don't want it to get hard. I want it to stay soft. <clears throat> I want to be able to reuse it potentially. So um, once I get that out, I can then measure that or I could even scan it and then bring that into a CAD model and those measurements into the CAD model to make the bracket. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll go out to the truck and start taking some video of me fiddling with it and probably screwing up quite a bit um, but just to get that net shape so then we can come up with a bracket and then 3d print it so here we have the back of my chevy colorado it is a bison aev 2021 and these are the cutouts right here on each side of the bumper that uh, have a little punch out here that you can just punch out and then there is an off there is a um part from aev where there's a bracket that you can attach right there to that nut um, however it does not fit the nylite lights uh, that were just shown um, above and previously in the video so i have to come up with a custom bracket and it's kind of difficult really to reach underneath there the um very difficult space without taking the bumper all completely off and doing a bunch of measurements. I can do some measurements in there, but it is a little bit difficult. So as we showed, I'm going to use clay to kind of get some rough, rough surfaces in place that I can then use to either scan or measure in uh, 3D modeling. So this is the clay. It's pretty readily available in any kind of Michaels or other stores like that. So let me get underneath here and just give you some detail. 
<clears throat> sorry about the shakiness uh, holding the camera and crawling underneath the truck, trying to get into positions a little bit tough. So, <clears throat> so here you can see there's a torque screw that's holding the bumper um, to the frame of the body, a portion of it anyway. And that's where we actually end up mounting a bracket for the light. You can see in this area, there's features uh, that you can't quite see above the screw. And there's the round um, part of the bumper we have to work around. So that's why we're going to try to use clay. So I have a chuck of clay here. And I'm going to just work it a little bit. It comes out a little bit stiff. I want it to be a little bit malleable. And since I have that fastener there, I just want the whole location. I might actually um, kind of wrap this around it <clears throat> instead of like trying to jam it down onto it. I think I'm just going to wrap it around it. So we'll try that first. Get that location. And then once we wrap it around and fold it, we'll kind of pack it on a little bit <clears throat> and then attempt to put the light on. And really, what I'm looking to do is. I'm really looking to get the whole location of the of the the bolt location in there, um, relative to the slotted location here, and making sure the surfaces, you know, they're they should be parallel to each other. But we'll see. All right. After uh, wrestling with a little bit, um, I got two surfaces here. I have this surface which was the bracket on that. And I have this feature here, which is the feature around the bumper with the, where the fastener's at. Um, and what I really, really wanted was this feature right here for sure. <clears throat> so now with that, I can take some measurements um, and start to build a model on this or I could try to scan it as well. Maybe I'll try to scan it I'm not really going to show that part, but um, We'll see how that comes out, but at least now I have some distances and surfaces I can work with All right, uh, <clears throat> I'm working in the fusion 360 environment and I did decide to scan the clay fit up that I did uh, with my Revo point, it did scan very well, being off white, um, no reflections, really good color to to scan, uh, and this was the model I got, and it definitely picked up some key features here. I wanted to pick up obviously the whole location, but I also wanted to pick up some of these edges. And the important thing here is there's some sheet metal buildup in that bumper where it's attached, where that fastener is and this this getting close to what this angle is was really important even though i did modify it some after some really some fit up um and then by then placing getting that feature then placing the light where i wanted it in its bracket i was able to get the other feature including the cutout slotted area for the fastening bolt So from this, I was able to establish these surfaces, which are pretty parallel, um, pretty close to parallel. And then I also measured them to make sure. So, um, so those will be the surfaces I'll be building my sketches off of. And so from that, there were these sketches. I'll turn off the body here. So these were the sketches that I initially built for all locations where that slot was at. As you can see, it's kind of at an angle from where I've kind of built this 
this outline surface. Um, not so important so much because there's going to be one that goes perpendicular here going the other direction on the bracket I make. But, and then you can see where I created where I'm going to create a lip here that's going to be a feature that keeps this bracket from turning. I did make an adjustment a little bit later after I did a fit up check. Um, and that's why you see that change in that angle. And the way I would do that is I pretty much printed a small piece like this. And I did a fit up. I did make sure the location was right, make sure the angle was right, make sure the rotation locked was in the, in the right orientation. So it's very important to do that. And you can do print parts of your model and, and draft versions of your model just to do fit up fit up checks. That way you're not wasting an entire print of an entire day. See if I can rotate this. All right, so I continue to build, putting the hole in, putting the different sides in, adding a back piece for support. Um, added some radiuses for some strain relief. Um, then I'm going to start adding different cutouts and sweeps just to give it some more strength in corners. And then a gusset for stiffness. And then this angle here, this is where part of my bumper, this, this feature was created off this plane because my, my rock slider bumpers go actually have not only are they by the doors, but they're also back by the rear of the bumper. And they come through and they feed into the main bumper. So I have to have a cut out there for this to fit on. I estimated it because I didn't get a good feature read on it on the on the clay. And right off the bat, it fit just fine. So there's plenty of clearance. So you can see where I cut that out. Moving off some of the edges chamfered some of the corners now i'm adding a perpendicular slotted hole for helping uh, guide and align the light and then i end up mirroring it so i have a mirrored version so overall we can just take a look at let's turn off all the construction lines Sketches, find them all. All right, so this one here is on the left rear. Well, I guess if I'm in the driver's seat, left rear and right rear brackets. And here's the slotted holes for attaching the eye light on. So after uh, taking the clay out and doing some measurements and designing, this is the bracket I came up with. Uh, I did have to do a cutout just to allow some room for part of the bumper there. Um, this is 3D printed. It's pretty stiff, uh, made out of ASA. So, I mean, it should hold up pretty well. But we'll see. Um, again, this is to fit a nylite light which I'll uh, I'll put that specifically down in the description to install it you need to take this bolt off it is a um, t45 pretty big and the uh, and there's a u nut on the other side and that takes a little bit of work prying off you got to kind of pry it up push it out it does take a little work it's not super simple but it's not impossible uh, so that's just going to go back up in there, that location. We're going to mount this over the top. And you do have to then get a thread, in, uh, a new uh, bolt, and have lock washers and, and stuff here. But note that this is actually a, a one point, I think it's a 1.5. So it's a 10 millimeter 1.5 thread. 
So if you have a 1 or a 1.25, um, those are too fine. You need to find a 1.5. So I did get this one out pretty easy, and I went about it in a little bit different way. Unfortunately, I did scrape some of my paint off, so I'll have to touch that up when I'm done. But the uh, So this sits back behind here, underneath there and back, and it's in there tight. You know, there are little... There's a little um, shoulder here that gets stuck up in the hole, so it's hard to get out. So what I did is I took a chisel, I hammered it so it caught this bottom edge and pushed it back. And once it was back, then I knew that shoulder was out of there. And I just literally... While that was sitting up there, I took my hammer with the claw end and I just put some brute force onto it to push it out. And then once it kind of got up here, I just, once it got out this way, it was out just a little ways, I just stuck a, I don't know if I can simulate this or not, it's going to be tough, but once it was kind of out like this, that's not quite the flip direction once it was out here like this. Let me see if I can't get it in there. Right. So once it was out here like this, then I just stuck a screwdriver up in there and yanked it out the rest of the way. So just uh, turn your head or make sure you wear some glasses because it, it can fling out at you. Careful, but it, it came out pretty easy then this time around. It's up there. Um, realized... Uh, might be a little bit of interference there, so I did not put in um, the washer on this uh, nut. This nut had a has a flat bottom, so um, the uh, and it's really really close. The um, fits pretty good though. Otherwise, you know, I do have concerns of it being 3D printed and not been over torquing this. Uh, so I didn't overdo that. Uh, and also, the lock washer I had, I couldn't find an actual 10 millimeter lock washer. So I grabbed a 3 8 and it's a little bit too small. So I'm going to attempt not to put it in there for now to see how it holds up. But overall, it's in place. It's like it's in a really good position. And we'll try to install a light and see what, what it looks like. All right, so there we go. We got a light there. And we got a light there. Let's we'll see if they work. There we go. Nice. So there you go. You have it uh, just using clay to get the rough dimensions of a really hard to reach place uh, to then design a bracket uh, just using some basic tools. Um, I actually did play around a little, doing a little bit of scanning on that. Scanned the overall shape of the clay after I had it. Uh, clay scans very well, um, just because it's off the stuff I use was very like a um, flat white, which flat colors, flat things scan very well. And uh, and then I used also calipers measuring it just to verify everything seems okay. Um, some adjustments to do after installing it. You know, I might make it a couple millimeters shorter, but overall I can still get that adjustment just from tilting the uh, lights down a little bit so they're not coming straight out. And so there you have it, uh, installing some Nylite lights um, onto an octane switch. Till next time.